Hey folks, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look at our third and final application of interference by division of amplitude, which is thin wedge interference. So let's get started. So our last application of interference by division of amplitude is thin wedge interference, and it says that interference by division of amplitude can also be produced by light falling on two plates of glass separated by an air gap, i.e. a wedge, as shown below. So in this picture we can see that light is reflecting in a similar way to what we saw for thin films and for blooming of lenses. And you can see we've got these two glass sheets which could just be microscope slides where they're touching at one end and then they're separated at the other end by some object. And this setup allows us to measure the diameter or width of very small objects, such as the width of a human hair, a piece of paper, or a thin metal wire. And the picture shows the instant light coming in, and then light that is reflected from the two glass surfaces, and this produces interference, just like we've seen in the other applications. It then says the instant light reflects from the inside surface of each glass sheet. The ray reflected from the upper glass sheet will not undergo a phase change since it is travelling from a medium with a high refractive index, i.e. glass, into one with a lower refractive index, i.e. the air. So the light is reflecting from the inside surface of each glass sheet, remember? So that would be this inner surface where my cursor is, and then this upper surface of the lower glass sheet. And from the first reflection, we're saying there's no phase change because the light's reflecting at the surface between the glass and the air gap. So because we're going from a more dense material to a less dense material there, then there's no phase change. However, if we think about the reflection from the air to glass at this second surface, then there will be a pi phase change. And it says that here, the ray reflected from the lower glass sheet will undergo a phase change of pi on reflection as it is traveling from a medium with a low refractive index, i.e. air, into one with a higher refractive index, i.e. the glass. So what we have is a bit like for thin film interference, where we've got one reflected ray that has not undergone a phase change, and then the other reflected ray has undergone a phase change of pi radians. And these two rays of light, remember, are going to interfere and produce an interference pattern. It then goes on to say that when a thin wedge is observed through a travelling microscope with a monochromatic light source, for example a laser, a series of interference fringes are observed. So what you might see is a pattern that looks something like this with some dark bands or some light bands. And it says these are successive areas of constructive and destructive interference as the optical path difference increases. Using the travelling microscope allows the separation of the fringes delta x to be determined. So in the picture it shows this distance between two fringes, delta x going from the middle of this fringe to the middle of this fringe. And it then says the fringes produced inside the air wedge can be used to determine the diameter of the support at the end D, for example a human hair or piece of thin metal wire or foil. And for thin wedges it can be shown that delta x is equal to lambda L over 2D, where delta x is the fringe separation measured in metres, lambda is the wavelength of the instant light measured in metres, L is the length of the wedge measured in metres, and D is the diameter or thickness of the object at the end of the wedge also measured in metres. So hopefully you can see the bigger the wavelength of the light, the bigger the fringe separation, and also the relationship between fringe spacing and the thickness d. So if we rearranged for d there, we could get d equals lambda l over 2 times delta x. So the bigger the fringe separation, the smaller the thickness or diameter of the object. Or the smaller the fringe separation, the larger the diameter or thickness of the object. And lastly it says to know that in practice the distance across multiple fringe separations is measured and delta x determined. This reduces the uncertainty in the fringe separation or in the thickness d. And this is a common answer to questions in past papers where they ask why is the distance across multiple fringe separations measured rather than just the distance between two fringes. And it's because of this idea that it reduces the uncertainty in the fringe separation or in the distance d. Lastly, looking back at the picture, just be wary of if you are measuring across multiple fringe separations, that you make sure you divide by the right number to get delta x. So we're saying that rather than measuring the distance between two adjacent fringes, we can reduce the uncertainty in delta x by measuring across many fringe separations. So let's say we went from the middle of this one to the middle of this one, then you might think that because there's one, two, three, four fringes there, that you would divide this distance by four to get delta x. But that's not going to be the case, because remember, we want the distance between two of them. So we're looking at the gaps between the fringes. So you can see if we go from here to here, that would be one gap. If we go from this one to this one, that would be two gaps. And if we went from this one to this one, that would be three gaps. So we would divide our total distance by three instead of four to get delta x. And that's a common thing you'll see when doing questions using this equation. And a useful way to think about it might be to count the number of fringes and then all you need to do to get delta x is take the distance and divide it by the number of fringes take away one. And if we did that for our example, if we went from this one to this one, 
that would be one, two, three, four fringes. And to get delta x, you're going to count the number of fringes and then divide the distance by the number of fringes, take away one. So that would be four minus one, which is three. And that's what we said for the number of gaps there, one, two, three. So hopefully that makes sense. But just to recap, if you're measuring the distance across multiple fringes to find delta x, then you can find delta x by dividing by the number of gaps between the fringes, not the total number of fringes. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.